Formosa and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator here in Australia. Tonight I want to show you how I created this beautiful card for the colour inspiration challenge which has just gone live. Um, the colours for this challenge were Daffodil Delight, Granny Apple Green, Tahitian Tide and Highland Heather. And this lovely photo inspiration um, was picked by me and is a photo that was taken by my eldest daughter's partner. He loves his birds. And this was taken, this is a photo taken by him and you can find him at Tim Wildlife on Instagram. Now, before we go any further, I'm actually going to share this over to my Facebook page in case there's anyone over there waiting. Um, share their post. Cool. All right. Okay. So yes, that is um, that was our picture inspiration. Those are our four colors. And this is I'll put that over here. Excuse me. And this is the card that I created. It's a wreath, and it uses a little bit of water coloring. Um, and I've also got. I'm not sure whether you can see that too well. But there's a little bit of um, white heat embossed stamping in the background and I've gently blended the green, the granny apple green over the top of that just to um, give it a little background feature. The sentiment comes from one happy family. I love that little happy birthday. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful little sentiment. I use it quite a bit. And my layers are all offset. Some people like that, some people don't. But that's quite okay. Um, I actually cut the layers, the matte layers, so that you can, if you decide, you can just layer them up one on top of the other rather than offsetting them. That would be, that's entirely up to you. Okay, so, um, I'll go just go through what we what we'll be using. So my my layers, I've got basic white cardstock and I've got daffodil delight cardstock and the blue comes out of the 2224 in color 6x6 six six, uh, paper pack. Um, you get the five in colors in one pack, which is a, a pretty good buy. Um, fluid 100 watercolor paper. I've used the flowers of home dyes, quiet meadow. Um, this the the distressed font here. I've used it, and then one happy family. I've used the little happy birthday. Hello, Bev. Thank you for joining me, and Joanna. So great to see you. Oh my gosh, we've got people from the other side of the world with us tonight. Welcome, Joanna. Welcome. Great to have you here. All right. Um, we will also need, maybe not so much your embossing, but embossing buddy, but I have it with me. I've got white embossing powder. I have my Stamparatus. I'll show you a little trick that I use for that. Um, inks. We will need all these inks. Versamark for our embossing. Your Granny Apple Green, Tahitian Tide, Gorgeous Grape, and maybe not the yellow, maybe not Daffodil. I don't think I used that at all, but I've got it with me just in case. You will need a blending brush, uh, mini glue dots to create the wreath. Now I didn't put twine on this one, but I've got it with me. We might decide to put it on the one I create tonight. Um, my liquid glue, 
I've got the smallest little, what's this, the A block? A block, and I'm going to actually use that to watercolor with. It's my favorite way to watercolor when I'm doing just one particular color. All right, so that's all that there. Let me make some space. That's just in front of me here, so I'm going to... Oh, I've also got a glass. Now, if you're in Australia, you might recognize these glasses. Uh, when my kids were young, these glasses, you could buy these in the supermarket and they had jam in them. Bab, do you remember these glasses? Anyway, I don't have too many of these left. I think they all got broken over the years. But um, And, of course, I don't eat a lot of jam anymore. But, yes, I, I've got a, gla uh, a glass. And that what I'm going to do with that is just, I'm just going to go draw around it with a pencil just to get my circle circle shape what i and i've got paper towel just in case i might need that with my water coloring so i've got that just in case um to save a little bit of time i did actually prepare all my die cutting beforehand but i will go in and show you how i water colored that um because i do need quite a few not I think, um, I don't know, there's probably seven of each one for that. And f to get for those leaves, I think it was this one. This one, oh, let me make some room. I've got stuff here everywhere already. Possibly, oh, it's stuck. Possibly this one. Yep. So there's this one and I think... Um, this little one up here and I've got a hair there and there was a third one this one here so these three these are the three that I've used to create my wreath and then the flowers the trio of flowers here so I've used that okay I'll just go through all my um, the cardstock that we will need. Thanks, Joanna. I love wreaths. I have a I have a soft spot for wreaths. Um, I'll make a wreath for any occasion. Uh, I just love them so much. All right. So I've got a white card base, and you can just. I have a custom card base, so just make it up to whatever size you like. My daffodil layer is a quarter of an inch smaller on two sides than my card front. Now, I had a ruler, a quarter of an inch. That's that's roughly about half, half a centimetre. And, um, and then this one is three-eighths of an inch less on two sides so you'd probably go down oh three-eighths of an inch so that's um that's nearly a centimeter yep a centimeter smaller than your card front okay not smaller than the than the mat the that layer and I'm not sure tonight whether I'm going to use that layer, that side rather, or this side. This is the side I used in, in this card here. But I thought just for something a little bit different, change it up a bit, I might use the, the, um, the check. And then your top layer is basic white and it's half an inch smaller on two sides than your card front. And then the inner for your card. I'll show you what I did. All right, for the inside, again, I um, heat embossed white in the bottom corner here and I added strips of the same layers as what I've got on the front just to bring that design element from the outside to the inside. And I have those strips here. And the inside, the inside um, piece, again, is a, just a quarter of an inch smaller on two sides than your card front. And then I've got 
a couple of strips here for my sentiment. I just grabbed something out of my scraps. I've always got strips um, in my scrap that I can use for my sentiments. You know, I think that one works well, but I got a spare one just in case. And then of course you need uh, your watercolor paper. All right, so we will start making a mess with our watercoloring. And you'll need a sheet. And what I like to do, and what, what I suggest you do is, um, rather than using like a half and half, because you don't need too many flowers, but you need heaps of leaves, heaps of foliage. So I've just cut off two inches and we'll color that side purple and that side the green over there I think that's all we're going to need for now oh you'll need a spray bottle guys and I'm going to just grab a piece of paper towel and I'm going to put this down so I don't make a mess okay so we've got granny apple green and highland heather we'll do the highland heather first and I'll just spray my Spray my watercolour paper and I'm going to get my little A block. I'm going to smoosh it into my ink pad and I'm going to just paint paint my watercolour paper. Now before, there's water on here and before you dip it back in, you need to take that water off. We're going to dip it again, smoosh it again. And just add a little bit of you can make it as dark or as light as you like now if you want to what I'm going to do is just pat that dry now if you're in a hurry you can use a heat tool to dry it off I'm just gonna and then just to add some water watermarks and that just gives it a little bit of variation in your color. All right, so you set that aside to dry and now we go in and we will do the green, granny apple green. Lots of water on your paper. It'll take it because it's watercolor paper. That's what it's meant to do. All right, again, make sure that's clean and there's no purple on that. Smoosh. and just get color over that whole piece. You know, play around with it, add a few extra marks and that'll dry. Um, and if you're not, if you don't quite like how it's gone, you can come back and re-wet it and add a little bit more ink later on. It's better if you can allow it to air dry, the colors are much more vibrant um, you can, if you're in a bit of a hurry, you can heat, uh, get your heat tool out and um, and dry that off with a heat tool. But um, I will set that aside over here and let that dry. All right. Oops. I just dropped my container. All right. So that's done. Put that over here. All right. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, I love yeah, I have Bev, I have to say. And there's no there's really no technique. Honest to goodness, you um you um to smush your ink your block in, into your ink pad and just um, just go for it on your on your wet watercolor paper. Oh, Joanna, you, yeah, like it's it's so quick and it's so easy and like this one is, this one's almost dry already. And especially if you're creating um, um, 
like one color it works really well for one colors for your single colors um, like you can add in you could add in other greens if you wanted to but because this is a, a color challenge and we only had one green I've stuck with the one green and to get different tones of green that's how I've done that I've I wanted to um, watercolor so there's a variation um, and there's more than one 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 color but there's different tones of that color if you get my thing. All right, okay. This next bit. I'm going to put a little put a little powder on my fingers because my fingers could be oily and that will just dry up any of the oils that are on my fingers and I'm going to Add a, add a little bit of embossing buddy to the front of my card. I'm going to get, we don't need that anymore. Get my Versa mark. And I'm going to get this lovely, beautiful, distressed font stamp that's in Quiet Meadow. Now I have a sneaky feeling that this isn't quite straight on here. But if I use the bottom of my stamp, I think that will that will work. Okay. So I'm going to ink up my stamp. And I will I'm going to bring it up to like probably mm, just under halfway. And we're going to stamp. And then, oh, again, I'm hoping that's not going to overlap, but if it does, it might be a problem. And stamp. Put my lid on that, put that away, and we will grab my white embossing powder. It is a little bit crooked, but that's all right. That won't be a problem. All right. And we will heat set that. If I can get my heat, heat gun to come over this far. Now, don't overdo it when you when you um, use your heat tool. As soon as you see it turning, you can just stop right there because if you overdo it, what will happen is that it'll go from that lovely shiny down to a dull and almost flatten right out. Okay, I will need my green again. And we're going to add a little bit of color in the background. Um, have I got a scrap piece of paper? All right. All right. All right. So very, very gently, we're going to add a little bit of color. Across where that has been uh, heat embossed. Just pulling that color out, fading that color out to the um, other areas. 
so you don't have a harsh line. All right, so that's probably come down a little bit too far there. On that one side, but that's all right. So yeah, just a little bit of color so it pulls up pulls up that white embossing. And then if you have a cloth, a soft cloth or a tissue, we're going to go over the top and just polish it up, taking away all that ink that's been left on top of your embossing. But there you have this really soft, subtle background happening. There you are. And Jan's here to do well. Wow, we're from all the corners of the globe tonight. Welcome, Jan. Gosh, what time is it with you? Is it like the middle of the night, maybe? Early morning? Past the middle of the night. It's early morning, I would imagine. <sighs> all right. So, your glass. And we're going to grab... A pencil, now you need a really soft pencil, nothing too harsh. Oh, and of course, the two that I've picked up are two H's. I want it to be. And we're just going to put this kind of in the center, really, really lightly. Oh, that's not even in the center. Really, really lightly draw a pencil mark. Um, you will actually cover it up mostly. You won't won't see it at all so and that's that just gives you the circle shape and then you go and die cut all these beautiful leaves all this foliage I've I've cut quite a lot here I just got my piece of green and just die cut it all out I'll always if I don't use it tonight I will use it some other time so what I went and did is um, kind of did a big and a little and then a big and a little now yes I did cut three different ones out but I'll come back and you can make this Uh, as dense as you like or put put as many down as you like and a little so that's roughly what I how I want to go and then these little ones what I'll do when I'm finished is I'll just poke these in later so let's get that stuck down i'll get my glue dots oh i know jan i think i think you've mentioned that before 4 20 p.m a.m sorry wow that was me yesterday my husband needed to be in town early his alarm went off and i didn't go back to sleep and then last night i was absolutely stuffed but i slept and i and i'm lucky that i can sleep yeah yeah lack of sleep isn't ideal i have to say all right so we'll go back now and right on the bottom the end of your your little die cut here and it doesn't really matter we kind of know where we're going And, and if we don't, it all works out. Oh, there's two little ones there. That's all right. Um, it'll all work out in the end anyway. And I'm going to cover my lines. Oh.
and you continue around. Oh, I've got a, one stuck to my thumb. So I'm going roughly halfway down or halfway along each one. And that's the same as that one again. I might just change that up. If I stick all these down. All right, I want a big one. Oops. Using, using your, your drawn circle as a guide. So roughly halfway down. And then we've got these tiny little ones and I'm going to stick some of those in just to fill it out a little bit. Oh, these glue dots sure are sticky. I know. Wow, Jen, a nice storm. Gosh, you guys have had it tough over there this year with all your snow and ice. Okay, so just to give it a little bit more dimension, we're going to just stick, stick these in and around. Probably should be using my take a pick tool. Might be easier, hey? Turn this around. Sorry guys, I'm a bit quiet. I'm concentrating. Oh, what did I do that for? Oh, yep, here we go. Just filling it out, just to add a little bit more. And one more, I reckon. Yeah, Jen. <laughs> See, I don't mind the cold. I don't know how I'd go with snow though snow and ice I think I think that's done oh no down here and this is where I wanted to go and I complain because I, I I kind of feel like I don't get enough cold weather where I am I'm really tropical well not super tropical but quite tropical here so the um we don't get a great deal all right so there's the foliage for our wreath I'll put that over here and now so I kind of need to know where I'm going to put my put my sentiment strip when yeah here we go so 
kind of across here and I kind of like it in that spot because it then brings your focus into that little bit of embossing that, that I've got going on there. So we're going to do that and here are my flowers and it's just a matter of laying these down in different spots trying to get a, um, a balanced look about it. And then just a little one there, I reckon. Except I don't like this whole thing going on here. And there's a bit of a bit of a ball spot going happening. There's a bit of a I might just add another another leaf just to fill it out a bit. And we'll go this way. That's better. That's better. All right, so I've got heaps of flowers on my other one. And maybe down here. All right, okay, and again, I just use them. We're gonna run out of glue dots. Have I got another? pack it somewhere close um, now these big ones what I'm going to try and do is add the glue dot to yeah that's empty <laughs> Add the glue dot to where, oh, it's stuck to the thing. I dropped that, I'm not. So I'm gonna try and add the glue dot to where that larger part is. And I might just actually roll, roll it. Might be a little bit better. Right, so those two are stuck there and again I'm going to roll this up and I'm going to add it to this section here oops half of it stuck to my And this guy has got his little centre still there. Not much you can do about this little fella. I'm just going to put it on. If you really wanted to, I guess you could add um, add a um, gem or something to the centre of these. I kind of didn't like the look of it when I did my first card. And it's really not that noticeable. The big ones I put it under the, um, the sections where there's plenty of room. And then these two. Take out the center. And we'll add this on here. Okay. 
All right, there are my flowers. It's not, the circle's a bit, a bit wonky, but it's handmade, not hallmark. Isn't that what they say? All right, so that's done. That's empty. I can throw that away. My inks can go over here. So now we're going to stamp. I will keep those flowers for something else. So now we're going to stamp our sentiment. I'm going to take away the foam, my foam pad, because our stamp is red rubber and it has that cushioning in it already. If you were using a photopolymer stamp, you would need that little cushion. All right. So in my Stamparatus, I have this piece of clear plastic. It, it's, um, it's actually quilter's plastic, believe it or not. And one side is rough and the other side is smooth. I'm going to use the smooth side and I've got this little red circle and I'm going to put it up into this corner and I'm going to grab a magnet and make sure it's nice and secure. And then, so yes, this is Quilters Template Plastic and I got it from our local Spotlight store, which is like Joann's or Michael's um, in, the, um, in, the, in the North Americas or I'm not quite sure what your equivalent would be, Joanna, but anyway, and I'm going to stamp it onto that piece of plastic and that's going to be our template and I'm going to, now I've got a narrower one here somewhere. So this is my, it's like the old stamper majigs that we used to have and I don't need this to, I just need a little bit here. So I've slid my cardstock in underneath to where I want it, where I want it to stamp. So then I'm going to make sure that that's pushed up tight. So that hasn't moved, nothing has moved. I'm gonna get a magnet. I'm going to secure my cardstock. And then I'm gonna stamp. And there you have it. All right, exactly where I need it to be. Um, it, it's the same principle as the um, old um, stamp and magic that we used to have. And I learned that little trick from Cheryl Miller here in Australia. She uses that little trick quite a bit. So now I'm going to, I need my snips. And we're going to just trim this side. This side I'm going to trim straight, maybe a little bit more. And then this side I'm going to add a little bit of an angle, like so. And that will go on our card like this, okay. Add a couple of dimensionals, no in front of me lisa my lisa's not here tonight but lisa made me this cute little desk cutty that has all my little bits and pieces all my dimensionals my glue my tape runner and it's right there in front every single day you use it too bev yeah you have jan yeah I had one and I never used it enough, but it's exactly the same principle as a Stampamajig. All right, so I'm gonna, all right, so there's, I don't even think that's straight. I have a camera in, I'm gonna pull it up from this side, I think, because, oh, and of course I've pressed it down. Gently. Right. It's a little bit, um, it's a bit of a, 
tassel because I've got that the stamping's not straight therefore the um the sentiment looks a bit wonky still not straight I'm still not happy with it it's where you need your um there that's better okay all right so now let's put this together daffodil like I said my measurements will allow you to go straight uh, to go straight um, or you can go a little bit wonky and offset and I quite like that side of the papers so that's what we're going to use all right so and I am going to offset did I say that all right so a little bit of a jointy angle just so that there's a little bit of color peeking through. And our card front. I haven't gone right to the edges because I wasn't quite sure how it was going to sit on my card. And what I'm trying to do is just line up my white with my white. Okay, so that's the front. Um, now somewhere. I have got, where are my gems? Did I pick them up and put them away? Oh, dang it. I don't know what I've done with them. Um, the dots that I used they're definitely not in my pack box here and I didn't use them I might just use those tonight rather than the blue I don't know what I've done Use them ones. No. Thank you, Doke. Let's use those. I'm not quite sure what what I've done with the ones that I actually put on, but they're not they're not in my embellishment box, and they aren't in my. box here that's got everything in it so these are Tahitian tied so we will just use these ones all right now I'm feeling that the wreath is kind of quite low on my page so what I'm going to do is add see these are the dots that I used um, in my last one and I thought they really picked up that blue but these, these are uh, Tahitian Tide too, and they have five different shades of the color. So we'll, we'll just use these ones and we might use the, the darker ones that will show up a little bit. Oops, a little bit better. So I kinda, I 
I'm just pulling pulling that blue in from the DSP that I've got oh, up here. Let's go up here. Oh, come on. Might go the lighter ones. Oh. These are tricky little suckers. Kind of like there. And then maybe a neither a lighter one again up here. All right, and that's just pulling, pulling that color or pulling your eye up and diagonally to fill in that white space at the top. And that doesn't look too shabby at all. All right, so that's the front. Do you want to stick around and see how I did the the inside? Where's my pieces of paper? All right, so again, um, we need to do some stamping. I'll get my, see if I can get this done really quickly. Because I've been here for a little while. I'm going to just stamp. I think I only stamped once. Oh, that's this one. Did I only do one? Yeah, one stamping in the inside. So... Find a one here and put the lid on that and we'll get our green again oh no heat emboss where's my white powder now when you buy your uh, embossing powder they come in two packs you get a basics pack which has which has white black and clear and then you can get a metallics pack which has three of sorry it has one one container but there's three containers uh, it has the gold the silver and the copper All right. so real quickly All right, just heat, heat setting this. And then we'll ink it up like we did with the front. All right, cool that off. Okay, where's my little scrap of paper? Oh, I don't think I missed a bit, guys. That's better. There was a little section down here that I'd missed. So make sure it's... All right, so very, very gently, we're going to add a little bit of color. Now, ordinarily, what I what I would do is actually cut this, trim this to be larger than what you need, because what can happen is that you can have a really harsh edge where your ink has grabbed, um, and then you can just trim trim those edges off, and it just looks that little bit nicer. Okay, so here. Where's the one that I made earlier? I just need to have this as a bit of a reference. I'm going to put my blue on first and I will just trim this roughly. 
and I'm going to add a little bit of glue. And I have a feeling that this is going to be too long anyway. And we're going to, nope, this way. So I'm going to meet up that, meet up that side. Okay. And then do the same here. And I will need to trim that top edge uh, this way. And I'll just trim that off. All right, so here we go. And it will be, you'll need only need, because it's going to be way too, way too long. So I'm going to take like a little, tiny little, maybe I'll try an eighth of an inch. I think that's all I'm going to need. Or is that a quarter? That might be a quarter, I think. Let's try a quarter. I think that'll work. Is that gonna fall? And I think that's gonna be right, yep. And we're gonna add that into the middle of our card. Uh, where's my little holder thing? maybe just a smidge too much off it, but it still works. And there you have the inside. All right, so you've got the inside with all those lovely design elements, the same as, your, as the front. And that's your card, everyone. <sighs> all right, it feels like I've been gone forever. Any questions, anyone? You love it, Jen. Thank you so much. Oh, Ellen's here too. Welcome, Ellen. Thank you so much for joining, coming along. Yes. All right, so that's it. That's the one I made earlier and has the different oh, glossy dots, I think these are. And then these are the matte dots. So, um... I'll have to search now and try and find what I did with them because I don't I'm not quite sure what I what's happened to them. Okay. But yes, it just fills in those few little gems up up on up top just fills in that all that uh, white space that's happening up there because I did kind of um put it um build it build that wreath a little bit too low, but that's okay. It still works. Oh, thanks, Bev. Thanks, Ellen. Thanks, Jan. Um, yeah, so this was for Colour Inspirations. Um, it's just gone live tonight, so if you get a chance, join the group and make a card and put it up. And um, There's an album there with all the... Um, with the design team in uh, cards and, in, and the inspiration for you to have a look at. So um, it's a nice little group, not too big. Um, and then if you win, you get the chance of being our guest designer for the following challenge. So that's, that's how it works. All right, that's it from me. Um, if you're watching this on replay, thank you very much for coming along and watching. Um, I will say now that the um, all the products that I've used tonight in creating this card can be purchased from my online store. I will add the link when I'm finished here. And um, if you've enjoyed what you've seen tonight, please subscribe and just um, set your notifications to for that bell to call that way you'll you'll um, be able to catch up I'll catch all my lives and all my videos and everything 
as they are released. So that's it for me. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining me. Have a great week. I should be back again next week, all being well. And um, take care. See you later. Bye.